Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to our video interview program for questions to our expert. In the ongoing discussion of re on reducing global CO2 emissions and utilizing alternative sources of energy, hydrogen is taking a prominent position. I'm talking today uh, to Timo Snören, general manager industrial gases Europe for Worthington Industries. I'm talking to Timo to obtain insights on hydrogen applications for mobility and the assessment and his assessment of driver's research and development. In the ongoing discussion on reducing global CO2 emissions and utilizing alternative sources of energy, Hydrogen is taking a prominent position. Timo, welcome to our program. Could you give us a brief outline on Worthington's involvement as an industrial manufacturer in context with hydrogen? Yes, well, good morning, Aaron, and um, obviously welcome to everybody and to the viewers. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity today to talk about Worthington, to talk about uh, hydrogen. Perhaps a quick uh, overview of Worthington Industries uh, as a company. It's a leading industrial manufacturing company delivering innovative solutions. Uh, to customers that span many, many industries, including retail, um, construction, uh, and energy. Um, we have about 51 um, facilities in, in nine countries uh, with about 7,500 employees. Um, but specifically to your question, um, Erwin, on, uh, on hydrogen, um, you know, as a, as a manufacturer of, of high pressure gas containment solutions, we have been supplying the industry with hydrogen steel high pressure cylinders since uh, as long back as 1924. Um, our sister company in Pomona, California, as well as our Polish facility, um, have been manufacturing and supplying bus and truck manufacturers with onboard hydrogen and CNG fueling systems made with type three aluminum cylinders fully wrapped with reinforcing carbon fibers. In fact, last year we built a state-of-the-art type 4 hydrogen and CNG composite high-pressure cylinder uh, facility here in Austria in Kienberg, where I'm located, um, which will soon be supplying gas containment solutions for gas transport and vehicle integration. Excellent. Timo, which countries, in your opinion, are currently the front runners in research and development of hydrogen related technology and its industrial applications? Um, and what have they done better than the others? Well, Aaron, on, on a global scale, countries like Japan, Korea, uh, and China, they are at the front of, of hydrogen developments, uh, especially with regards to vehicle technology. Um, however, Europe's uh, typical leading countries in machinery engineering, like Germany, Italy, but also Norway and France, they're also the ones leading the industry with regards to the development and production of components and solutions needed for the entire hydrogen uh, economy, such as compressors, fuel cells, cylinders. Uh, or gas street components. And speaking of gas street components, Erwin, um, that are needed for the vehicle integration, we, uh, we've recently acquired PTEC Pressure Technology. It's a leading independent designer and manufacturer of valves and components for high pressure hydrogen and CNG storage uh, and onboard fueling systems. Um, and with PTEC in our portfolio, we can actually provide more comprehensive system uh, for the storage, transport, and use of alternative fuels like hydrogen or CNG. And our strategy obviously aims to pace the rapidly growing hydrogen economy worldwide, uh, but also particularly in Europe, where strict legally mandated emissions reductions are accelerating the growth. Thank you, Timo. From your observations and your um, in-depth presence in the local Austrian market, um, how would you rate the um, competitive position of Austrian-based research institution 
institutions and the local uh, manufacturing companies. Yes, um, we uh, we definitely and strongly believe that Austrian institutions and institutions uh, such as High Center, um, TU Graz, Eco Plus, AVL, List, or Fronius, there's Verbund, ÖBB, they are very well positioned in Europe. Um, most, if not all, of these institutions uh, have been integrally involved in working out Austria's climate and energy strategy. It's called Mission 2030, uh, in which Worthington was also uh, involved. Uh, and the Mission 2030 includes a separate hydrogen strategy. Uh, we're obviously proud, as Worthington, to be among the leading Austrian companies and institutions who are paving that way into the hydrogen fueled future. Great. Looking ahead, um, perhaps uh, in five years or even beyond, in five years from now, would you expect to see a tangible share of hydrogen propelled road vehicles, trains, or ships in operation? Yeah, that's obviously a very good question. Um, and uh, I think everybody has their own uh, glass ball to look in. Um, hydrogen fuel mobility, we are convinced, is set to grow exponentially across the uh, entire globe. Uh, there are some studies out there that see hydrogen fueled vehicles constituting up to 20% of the total vehicle fleet by 2050. Um, but specifically to your question, even in the short term, we would expect to see hydrogen increasing its market share. Um, last summer, the European Commission has unveiled a general hydrogen strategy in order to meet the EU's long-term climate and energy goals. Um, and the development of alternative fuels infrastructure, which concerns the uh, mobility sector, was among the top 10 recommendations made. While the percentage will still be small, um, you know, we should be able to see around 10,000 heavy duty trucks on the road, uh, 200 uh, hydrogen trains, a couple of thousand hydrogen buses, and up to 20,000 uh, hydrogen cars and light duty vehicles. And the good thing about this market and the growth drivers is that it's all embedded in regulations and, um, and, and laws. So the European Clean Vehicle Directive, for example, is going to play an essential role uh, in increasing the share of hydrogen fueled vehicles as it defines the mandatory procurement targets for the purchase, lease, or rent, or higher purchasing uh, of clean buses. Um, and it will go up to 50% for the first period until 2025, and up to 75% uh, of those purchases that have to be clean uh, until 2030. Uh, specifically for Austria, 45% um, till 2025 need to be clean buses, and 65% in 2030. So very strong growth drivers embedded in regulations and that's obviously a very interesting market. Absolutely. Uh, Timo, thank you very much for this concise insight in a exciting industry with exciting developments, beneficial to all of us, hopefully, and to the climate. Um, it was a pleasure having you with us today, wishing you success in the endeavors of Worthington and in particular in uh, promoting hydrogen as a means of uh, alternative energy. I'm happy to have you with you, to have you had with us. Thank you very much. I'm Erwin Kretschner, senior partner at Pendel Piswanger InterSearch Austria. This uh, video is available on the InterSearch Pendel and Piswanger homepage. Uh, we welcome, of course, questions from our viewers um, for Timo about Worthington, about hydrogen. If we can be assistance, do drop us a line. Let us know. We'll come back to you. Thank you very much, Timo. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you for the opportunity and all the best. Thank you.